Okay, what we're doing now, we're standing in front of our, our storeroom. Now our storeroom with the, all the foods that uh, is distributed out uh, to all the kitchens, we go through about $6 million a year in inventory just on food alone. That doesn't include wine, beers, or liqueurs, just on food. Okay, now the way the storeroom works is that the AM instructor has to put an order in at least three days in advance, PM instructor's got to put their order in three days in advance. And what the storeroom will do, they'll put these orders together in baskets. Now, each class, each kitchen class within the school has three very important people uh, that the students are assigned to do these tasks. And that is one, you got a sanitor, takes care of the sanitation within the class. Two, you got a sous chef, and he's a student that's in charge of making sure everybody's doing their own thing, making sure they're doing this, doing that on time, and so forth. And second, and third, you got what is called a food steward. Now the food steward is a guy who's person, not guy necessarily a guy, a person responsible to come down to the storeroom to pick up the food order, to get it to the kitchens first thing in the morning or first thing in the afternoon. Now before we get in our kitchen in the morning, Thomas or, or one of the other guys up here will come down to the storeroom, to the meat room and pick up our food order, bring it up, go through it, tray it out and make sure we have everything. Fish, seafood, things like that, meats, everything's got to be in at least a couple of days in advance to be able to have these guys order it in, get it in, and the fabricator for us to make sure it's fresh as possible. All right, so come on in. Okay, over in this area, uh, we got, uh, we've got the potatoes over in here, we got some onions over here, shallots over here, we got regular what we call chef potatoes here, all purpose potatoes working here. Look at this, we got some nice yellow tomatoes going on here, still getting cherry tomatoes in. Now we do have farms locally to work hydroponic, okay, and work with hot houses that we can get things in, like the yellow tomatoes is coming in, and there's a few other things. They make these papers for fruit wrapping. Now it can be plain paper or it could have a little seal on it, like this one does right down here. It's got a little number on it, a little letter on it. Some of these papers are treated for quicker wipe, ripening of the fruits, okay? So depends on how the paper's marked is what paper the company may use to wrap the fruit to help them age a little bit better and to ripen faster. So if you're looking at uh, any type of legume, we talked about legumes the other day, dry beans, popcorn rice, uh, uh, red rices, black rices, anything like that is available to you. I know last year, last summer, we was able to get fresh cranberry beans. Can't get them now, we can get dry cranberry beans. We got the uh, Israeli couscous, we got uh, quinoa, we got spelt, we got you name it, we have it in terms of the grains, in terms of much you want to work with. Cereal is different type of cereals for breakfast cookery. Uh, if you want million dollars worth of saffron, we got million dollars worth of saffron here, okay? Uh, there's a few other things we got. It's uh, fairly expensive when working with it. Now, you will notice you will notice jarred mayonnaise. You will notice jarred relishes. You will notice jarred clams or canned clams and things like that. Don't forget, we got a student center down over the hill. Okay, the student center will get these particular things already prepared, or uh, ordered in because they'll need them to make sandwiches and entrees and things like that. We do have assorted pastas. The reason why we got assorted pastas is because many of the pastas we do use are what we call extruded pastas. And extruded pastas want you to have a hole in it or have some type of a really weird shape to it that you can't really make by hand. Down in the back, you got rices. You name the type of rice we got for Asian rice, I think about four or five different types of Asian rices down there. We even get Skippy peanut butter if you need it. And of course, chili sauces if you need it. Uh, different type of Tabascos now are available. Mustards, four or five different type of mustards working for us. And of course, one of our big suppliers of the different flavored oils, uh, Cala Vida. Uh, when I taught breakfast, day one was my, I always taught regional when I did breakfast. Day one was my New England day. So guess what syrup I used? I had to use the pure. Pure maple syrup with the buttermilk pancakes honey butter, you know? And the rest of the week, I'll probably use the regular flavored maple syrup on some of the things, you know? You got nice cipollini onions, awesome for glazing. Very nice, and who's doing the duck breast? There you go. Over here, vanillas, extracts, uh, 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 glazing combination, if you look at sprays, you got glazing sprays and things like that, piping jellies being used and so forth. But again, don't forget, we passed the baking kitchens up there uh, and some of these sugar kitchens up there to make their own combinations. So we use some of these as bases, 
But then with these bases, we add things to them to make them uh, uh, different flavors and different colors. Cocoa butter, that's just your regular, uh, that's just your regular cocoa fat. That's all it is. That's what they make white chocolate like, for. It looks like pellets. Yeah, it's a, it's a butter. It's actually come out of cocoa. It's a cocoa fat. They call it butter, cocoa butter. Yeah. Whenever you go uh, shopping in an Asian area and you go into an Asian store, you always got that specific aroma. Once you pass these little flyers here that's hanging in this doorway, you're going to think you're going to be in one of those particular uh, 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 what the hell are they? Oh, markets. Sorry about that. <laughs> Come on in, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we took a big change uh, a couple of years ago with the, uh, with the Asian cuisine. It used to be a, a seven-day program where we just did uh, uh, China, Japan, Thailand, Korean, and Vietnamese. Well, Asia now is 14-day class, and what we do, we cover all Asia. That's the Far East and also Middle East because you got China in, in relationship borders with India. So we do include Indian on that, in that Asian area. And so we got, we got just about ingredients needed for all those uh, particular cuisines. We're looking at at least six to seven different Asian cuisines. And we're not only looking at the whole country, but we're also looking at primarily regions of those cuisines. And that's what we sort of focus on. So if you're looking at jaggery, we know that's probably related, sugar related to Indian, palm sugar is related to Indian cuisine, some of the different noodles and, and, uh, and whatnot. If you look up in here, you see red, green, orange, yellow cans up here, and these are curries. Curry is not a yellow powder, okay? Curry is a, is a paste made with peppers and other flavor agents. You can get a yellow curry powder, that's, that's possible. But that's more sword your Middle East type curries that you're using. But we do have different type of paste up here. And if you look at the different type of noodles over here, you got the soba noodles, you got rice noodles, you got spinach noodles, you got sweet potato noodles, wrappers. Of course, you got wonton wrappers, you got uh, shumai wrappers, you got, uh, you got spring roll wrappers, and you got egg roll wrappers. It's different between egg roll and spring roll. Egg roll is common, and spring roll is American. All right, I'm just kidding. That's, a, that's one of my, that's one of my uh, old instructors used to say. But anyway, rice paper wrappers. All the besides the rice paper wrappers are up here. The other items are in a freezer. Uh, different type of peppers, peppercorns. This at one time is very hard to find. We were, to have, we were able to have it all year round, but that was very hard to find within, within the Asian market was your uh, Sajuan uh, pepper. That's a little black peppercorn, okay? They were hard to find. All right, and then because you get different type of chili peppers, peanut oil, sesame seed oil, any type of oils. Now, here's one product that did change, and it was funny because when it changed, I couldn't really find them. This is used in Korean cuisine. It's, it actually comes from the ginkgo tree. And at one time, it was used to call ginkgo nut, all right? And when I used it, they used to have ginkgo nuts on the label. So I knew what it was for in terms of what I would put in. Put in pork stews and things like that. It's got a really nice specific flavor, a little bitterness, but a little, a little sweet and a little creamy working for you. So I went, I was doing a class in Pittsburgh for Heinz and I went down to the strip district where all the uh, Asian stores were at. And I hit every one of those Asian stores and I said, I'm looking for ginkgo nuts, it's Korean. So I'm walking past the section and I see a can and it said, and it said on here, white nuts. And saying, you know what, let me try those. Maybe, you know, I can use that in place of ginkgo nut. What happened was he changed the name and called it Chinese now. White nut instead of Korean ginkgo nut. All right, so I, I had a hard time when I opened up and looked at these are ginkgo nuts. So they changed it actually to white nut. So it's a, a little bit of history in terms of how they change things. Different type of tofus, okay? You got your different type of uh, tofus working for you here. Of course, we like, uh, we like uh, lychee nuts. Okay, fresh or best, but if you can't get them fresh, it's good in can uh, to work with the mare. Uh, you get different type of powders. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, dried mushrooms. Dried mushrooms. You got them all over the place. And black fungus. Black fungus and uh, black fungus is also known as wood ear. You know, and it also known as elephant ear because when you hydrate them, it looks like a big ear. Exactly. Uh, I call it black fungus. These are the noodles. Remember, the noodles you take these rice noodles. Uh, rice vermicelli, you put them in a deep fat fry and they take up the whole room. You ever see that movie? I don't forget what movie that was. The guy was cooking them and went everywhere. But these are also good boil, you know, in a soup. Really nice. You put the, 
You put these in hot sour soup. All right, so there's all different kind of application you got for, what do you do with it? Where did I put this, here? Okay, right there, because it, it was doing inventory. Okay, what do you got? What do you got here? Mustard oil, that's used. For massage only. Massage only. <laughs> I like Whoa. that. Whoa, fruits are kept over here now. Uh, tomatoes are here, but just easier to get to because this is a fruit cooler here. Uh, again, this is our ripening rack, and these are called, uh, what is it Del Monte call these? Extra sweet. Uh, the dole say super sweet. Now, if you leave these go for any period of time, what eventually start to go sour, start to ferment, and you can make some really nice pineapple wine with that if you really wanted to. Yeah.